I got stellionic for you. Okay. I got a few that I may be able to do. Hey guys, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Today we're going to be talking about all things dog in the R1S. Going through everything from pet mode to the size inside of here to just how many dogs we can really fit. So let's get into it. So literally an update that happened just yesterday that came through this car is auto kneel function. And let me show you guys this because it's very important for our older dogs or when you have children or just dogs that are not the jumpy kind that can get into cars. So this auto kneel, it's automatically going down, which is great. All right, now that auto kneel is complete and you can tell by this logo right here that says that the car is as far down as it can go, we can talk about the rest of everything. And we really wanna talk about, I mean, we're, we're dog owners. I worked in a rescue I'm with big dogs all the time. I wanna know, are there rear vents? Are what is the space like? Are you able to tie the dogs down? How many crates can fit inside of stuff like this? And, and how well does the pet comfort work? So we'll go all into that and within this video and maybe some extra videos after this as well. So the first thing we're gonna check out is if it does have in fact rear vents, which it does. So we have two vents in the back here and I sat back here, Kyle sat back here, and it gives a pretty good flow. But the only thing that has been mentioned is that it might not work if there isn't enough weight in the back and you can't manually control it when you're up front. So that might be a problem when you have dogs back here or just have smaller dogs that are in crates and it might not weigh enough. So that's one thing that we're definitely going to test out. And while we're back here, let's go ahead and see the trunks base here which is massive so you have to do the two clips on the side there to fold these down and then these two buttons will fold down the front which is great and I already have leashes here of course <laughs> and so there's absolutely enough room for your luggage for your dogs to all pile in here and a lot of people might say oh no this lip it's gonna get in get in the way but Rivian has thought about that and you can actually put this to be able to make a ramp so your dogs won't get caught but one thing I will already mention and I see as a concern are these side tie down points now if your dog is free roaming and is not tied down to anything the issue might be that they will clip their claws here so we are hoping that within time they will make, somebody will make just a rubber thing to put in here to be able to not have that happen. But you can take these out, which is great. And you can also use these to tie down your crates when they are in the back. You just have to make sure that, you know, that they will be on a slant, which is kind of a problem, but I'm sure you can be able to outfit it to where it's just one flat cohesive board back here, which is great. And I'm sure People within the dog sport community will figure it out if they end up buying these cars. But honestly, if you're into dog sports, you go to dog shows, you're into all that stuff, this can fit, I mean, I'm going to be guessing at least three to four crates, depending on the size of your dogs, which would be amazing because I am a huge advocate for putting your dogs in crates and not having them free roam. But if you are free roaming, let's see the tie down points in order to keep them contained. So let's go ahead and get these bad boys back up. So the ones that are usually made are the ones, I mean, I just always use the ones that clip into the buckle. So you really shouldn't have a problem with that. And the dogs will have enough room, but if you wanna keep these seats down, you can definitely tie it down to these tether points here which I've done in the past in some dog rescue. I have tied them down here. And then when I look around, there's nothing on the sides that I would suggest tying the dogs down to because the only thing is that little lip there, but that's to catch the seat belt and that is plastic. So that will 
not hold a dog, <laughs> to say the least. But for the size and the usability, the amount of dogs that can fit in here and fit in here comfortably is massive. And especially if you're on a road trip, you'll be able to pack all of your stuff and your dogs very, very comfortably with ease. This thing's, it's a big, it's a big car. And to talk about more of the road trips, people are always asking, well, what am I gonna do with my dog when I'm charging my car and it's gonna be taking 30 minutes or so and you wanna go grab a bite to eat? Well, they came out with the function, which is totally awesome. Kyle, why don't you go ahead and go around? And it is called pet comfort mode. And in order to activate this, you go over, you click on the fan icon and you click on this little paw print and you press turn on pet comfort mode and I'll get out to show you guys what it looks like. And it immediately tells you that my pet is comfortable, my pet is safe, and please don't crack my windows because they're actually fine. <laughs> so here is the temperature range that you can set the truck to while in pet mode. I'm gonna go ahead and put it all the way down to low and it goes straight back to 68. So 68 is the lowest you can go. Let's see for heat. High 74 is the highest you can go, which I think is a pretty darn good range for dogs. They don't need to be any warmer or any cooler than that. So that definitely works out just fine. So to continue on that subject, I will mention that we just went on a road trip with the dogs in the R1T and we put them in this mode and I don't believe I was 100% confident with the temperature inside versus the temperature reading on the phone when we were away. And I say this because as soon as I got to the car, it did not feel as chilly as I would want it to be when the dogs were in there. And so that is something that I might test in a different video just to see what is the temperature in this back row because if people have their dogs these seats up and they have their dogs all the way in the back. What is the temperature gonna be here when in pet mode? What is the temperature gonna be when they're up front in pet mode? And then also what is the temperature if, I mean, some are shotgun riders and they sit in the front, I know Blue does. So what is the temperature difference and if it is fluent throughout the trip? So now we're gonna simulate to see if within pet comfort, if these rear vents are gonna be on. So I'm going to sit in the back, pretend like I'm a dog, and see if those rear vents in fact are on and flowing while my dogs would be in the car. All right, we are in pet comfort mode in the R1S. I am sitting in the far back simulating crates if you're putting crates back here to see if there's enough weight and if the vents are in fact on, which they are. So I'm gonna jump up to here for the dogs that like to lay up here and see if the vents still stay on which I'll give it at least like 30 seconds to boot so hang out with me uh, but in the meantime you can talk about these front vents which they are on and flowing so that is good and then Kyle can you test to see if those yes yes Kyle said yes so all the vents right now are on and going and now that I've been here long enough these back vents are still in fact flowing which is awesome so that uh, the next thing we're gonna do is drive around to see if these vents flow while we are driving so before we go on a drive I wanted to mention one thing to you guys that when you're at the desired temp the fans stay on but when you're trying to reach a lower temp to reach like 70 degrees versus 68 the fans actually turn off which needs to be changed the fan should always be running and there should always be airflow in the truck or in the car while the dogs are in here so Kyle's gonna open the door and he is going to change it the temperature from 68 to 75 and you can already hear that there is no fans going on and there's no fans going on back here as well. So there is absolutely no airflow while the, the desired temperature is trying to reach 74 from 68, which is nice. So we're about to go on our drive here. We have the temperature set to 68 and the rear vents are in fact on. We also have the display locked as well. And we have Charlie here 
who is going to be our front seat rider while I'm sitting on these back seats to see if, in fact, these vents are on while back here. There seems to be, nope, there is no airflow on while we are driving. So these back air vents are useless to dog owners and are, there needs to be some way to be able to keep these on while we are driving because these vents are very important to dogs as these vents right up front here, they're really, I mean, not giving too much air. So I can't imagine that this amount of air is going to keep the whole back here. And if some dogs decide to sleep all the way back here, then they're really not going to stay too cool and they're going to be a little bit too toasty for everything, just like Mr. Charlie is back here. It does feel significantly warmer back here than it does up here. So that is a huge downfall when taking your dogs on road trips, that they don't have these additional air vents to be able to create even more airflow. So not good. So this is our ask for Rivian to see if they can do a software change to be able to manually put these vents on when you're driving so they're always on when you have dogs in the back or even if you maybe just don't even have a very heavy child that's back here. Um, being able to turn on these air vents would be a huge improvement. And also something that all automakers miss and this is pretty much in every car but a Suburban. Suburban does a great job with this, is that they always have these fan speeds to be so dang low. We need to bump up those fan speeds, have a lot of airflow back here for our furry friends and for our kids to be able to just stay cool while in the back. And that is something that just needs to be improved within all cars, but I know Rivian and I hope Rivian would be able to change that and have a little bit more airflow back here while the dogs or kids are back here. So before we load up the dogs, we're going to test how much of a height difference the truck is at kneel and at standard. So how we're gonna do that is by opening this trunk bit. Hi, Charlie. And we're gonna measure from the height of this. So right now, we are measuring at 35 inches it seems so this is in standard height so now we're going to go ahead and put it in kneel so we're in it's going into kneel mode and it actually did tell me that if i press the end of the stock i can cancel the kneel mode if i would like to and it is raising down i can't open the doors yet or else it will pause so now that the truck is all the way down let's go ahead and measure it so we started at 35 centimeters, or 35 inches, sorry. And we're going to see what it is in kneel mode. How much closer to the ground is it? And it's around 33 inches, give or take. So about a two inch difference, which isn't massive, but I really think that's all it can give so we'll take what we can get and hopefully Rivian will be making some stairs to help some of the slower ones but this dog Charlie come here Charlie Charlie is a big jumper so he has absolutely no problem getting it. so as you guys saw we have four lovely test subjects here we have Ellie Stella blue and Charlie Ellie is probably the lowest and to see if she can get in at the kneel height and we'll raise it up for each dog in accordance to their athleticism. So Ellie, come on, let's go. You ready? Let's go. Come on, you get in? Can you get in? You wanna hop up? Come on, ready? Up, up, Ellie, up. Come on, up, look, 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 look. look you see this? Let's go. You want a though? Ready? come on, come on. She is like, nah. I have absolutely no interest in jumping in that high. You gotta pick me up. So for Ellie, gotta load her up like a turkey on Thanksgiving day. She is just the most unathletic dog we have. And poor thing, she's all timid in here. 
It's fine, Ellie. It's good, yes. All right, Ellie, give me paw if you approve. Sheep approves. She just needs a ramp, which will be fine, or just agile people to be able to get her in and out. But the out part is hard. So let's test that as well. She will not jump down from here. That is just an absolute no-go. But Ellie, come here. Will you come out this way? Let's get out. Good girl. So she can quite, she can figure out how to get down. <laughs> it's not the most graceful. And she's out. Good job. Yeah, Ellie. So <laughs> to sum that up, you don't have an athletic dog. <laughs> And if you have an older dog, you'll definitely need steps or you just need to be strong enough to get your dog in the car and probably to get it out if it is older because I would uh, stray on the side of caution getting in and out because it is very high. So Ellie, you did a great job. Thank you. Let's bring the next contestant out. Come on. So our next one is Stella here. Stella is more of your normal average dog. She's got regular activity level and we are currently still in Neil. And let's see if Miss Stella can get inside on Neil mode. Come on, Stella. Come on, up, 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 up. Come on, up, up. Yes, good job. Good job. So Stella did the test and she passed. She can get in on Neil mode. So let's see if she can get in on standard mode. Come on, Stella, come on. Let's go. Good girl. All right, so now we are in standard mode and, or ride height, I might say. And we're going to see if Stella is able to get in at normal ride height. Come on, Stella. Ready? Let's go, let's go. Yeah. She gets in, but it is a little bit tight. Um, I don't know if she would be confident to do it every single time. So that extra two inches lower to the ground, super helpful for her. So Stella passed. Now let's get Charlie. Come on, Stella. So our next test subject is Mr. Charlie. He's about a year old, so he is very agile. He's very active and he is an athlete. So we're gonna start in standard height and see if he is able to get in at standard height. Charlie, ready, in. Come on, load up. Like ease. So let's bump him up a little bit and see if he can get in at the highest. So in order to do that, I need to go into the modes and go into off-road mode, click the go off-road, and go into highest. We're just going to inch it forwards and back so Kyle doesn't cringe at the, I don't know, bearings or whatever doing its thing. Is it up? Not even close. So I'm guessing it's gonna take a little bit because the air compressor is in fact out of air. So it might take a couple minutes for it to be able to raise to the highest height. All right, so we are in the highest mode here. It took a minute or so to be able to be raised this high. And wow, <laughs> just stepping out of it. Yeah, that's pretty high. So I guess we'll see if Charlie can get out first and then if he has enough courage to get back in. You ready, Char Char? Come on, Big C. Come on, Charlie. Charlie up. Come on. And easy. Charlie up. And easy. <laughs> so Charlie is super athletic. He can get in and out of this with ease. So there is no problem here. And just to give you the last one, he'll come out balls of blazing. Let's get Blue out here. Come on, Blue. I knew you were waiting right there. Yeah. Clears it with absolute ease here. So now it's time for the real test here. Whew, he's already ready to go. Let's get, let's give you some room. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. All right, load up. With these. <laughs> he didn't even hit the paint. He just hit back here. So all is safe. The paint is still okay. We can let Colton know that he has nothing to fix here with having the dog. So let's get all four of them inside and go for a little ride and conclude this video. Great buds. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, so the last part is we're gonna drive around with all four of these floofs and see if this, how the space is, if they're all comfortable. And yeah, so let's hop in and get going here. Bye, Ellie. So I guess we have another update 
waiting. We just updated this last night, right? And um, so we have another one, which is totally okay. And uh, we're not gonna do that right now. We're not gonna do it right now. We are not gonna do it right now. Lou is happy, always in front. Stella sticking out her head. Ellie sticking out her head. Blues yelping. And while I'm in here, I will mention that within this leather, blue has already been up here. There's been no scratches. It's holding up really well. It's already dirty. And on, are we gonna do it on the detailing channel? And so if you guys wanna see on the detailing channel, Colton's gonna show you guys just how to clean up after your dogs and also I know you guys know there is a ton of dog hair back there. So he's going to give you the best tools and tricks to be able to get dog hair out of your car. And that will be a great video. So it really seems like we can add, I mean, about five or six, maybe 10 more. I mean, that just looks very comfortable back there. You know, more the merrier. Since I'm not doing a full driving review here, I will let you guys know just about kind of my, this is my first time really driving it, so this is my honest opinion. Uh, it doesn't feel any different than the truck. I, uh, I like how high I sit up. I can see just about everything around here, and I'm not 100% sure why this car is stopped. Um, you have a green light, buddy, but thank you. Um, and I mean, I, I think it drives great. So I put the second row of seats up and I put them in what a normal person would and had a little bit of a recline. And it seems all four dogs fit back here comfortably. I don't think I'd really add any more to be honest. And with saying that, let's get the third row up and see how many fit in the back then. So here's another view of three dogs in the back. Um, I think definitely you can still fit two crates back here. Um, but my only issue is that with these bolsters here, it might be a little bit slim. So you would have to probably get a custom crate in order to fit two large dogs back here in crates. So right, Ellie. So now we're gonna put up the third row and see how many can fit then. So to conclude this video, do not have dogs back here when the third row is up. There's just absolutely not enough room for them. Maybe for one. No, I don't know. Come on, Stella. I mean, yeah, you could probably fit one in here, um, one large dog, and <laughs> but I don't think it's, I, I personally wouldn't, some people might, but if you have suitcases and stuff and you're going on the full road trip and everything, you're not going to have enough space for that third dog, and um, but overall, I think this video went over just about everything when it comes to dog stuff and we'll see you guys on the next one thank you for watching bye bye <laughs>